joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Univer Video is your platform for Christian content, and it gives you access to the church meetings of the Universal Church around the world, and they are in English. Even the meetings at the Temple of Solomon that provide live, simultaneous translations to English. All you have to do is sign up. And this is how. Visit www.univervideo.com online or download the application on your mobile device and complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card ready and choose your terms of payment. And before you know it, you'll be up and running. Stay connected to the things of faith during the 21 days fast of Daniel. Hello, my friends. God bless all of you. The Holy Spirit comes to set your mind free from the lack of vital knowledge of extreme importance for you to have life and to have it with abundance. May the Holy Spirit open your mind and give you understanding and set free your understanding from feelings to set your mind free from the voices of this world to set your mind free from everything which occupies space and only leads you to destruction. May the Holy Spirit open the understanding of everyone who listens to me right now that everyone may comprehend His will for our lives. I understood soon after my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus, 19 years of age, when I had my encounter with Him, it was so precious, so glorious, a blessing. That encounter, that which I received, the assurance of my salvation, the salvation of my soul, that I said to God, Lord, I don't want to live anymore. I want to die. I was satisfied, I was happy, and nothing, absolutely nothing, zero, could be a motive for me to live because I had found my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I asked, Lord, take my life. It's obvious that He did not do my will because on the contrary, we would not be here. But I wanted, I manifested this great desire, not because I was unhappy or depressed, no, but because I was extremely happy and I did not want to lose at any point in time His presence, the presence of God. I did not want to lose it. So I said, soon after, if you want to use me to make of me your servant, if you want my service, then don't give me riches. I don't want riches. I don't want money. I just want souls. Everything which I want in my life from today 
is souls. I want to lead other people to that which you just gave me. I want souls. Only that, nothing else. Well, life went developing and moving forward after we got married. And 13 years later, started the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. But all because of the action of the Holy Spirit in us. And He, knowing my sincere desire, He came and added to my life infinitely more than which I asked for. I remember. And it's good that we remember and not forget our humble beginnings, who we were, what we did, that we may not allow pride and vanity to take over. So I remember in one occasion I was working during the day and studying at night. And in that course which I was doing, there was a young man with me. And we would always speak a lot. And we were speaking of the things of God as I was just recently converted. So I wanted to win him over to Jesus. I wanted because I wanted. And he was listening to the word through my mouth. He was evaluating my faith and etc. But came a time, a night, better saying, he came to me and said, Dear, please, I came here to do this course because I want to go to university and study engineering. I want to study and graduate. I have a family who depends on me and I want to give the best to my parents, etc. And he justified what he said to me and it saddened me. Please, Edir, don't speak to me anymore about religion. You stay in your corner, I'll stay in mine. God bless you, but let me go my path and you go yours. When I heard that from that young man, I was so lost and confused. It seemed like I had a punch to the stomach. I was completely lost. And I went home at night. It was late at night. Walking there by Flamengo, you know, until I got home in Benjamin Constant. Because I didn't want to take the bus. I did not want anyone to see my suffering. And I was talking to God. Saying, my God, I just wanted one soul. For the love of your name. Please, just one. And now, this young man, whom I thought was already converting, he said enough and I started to cry I didn't cry you know a tear here and there I cried with hiccups I don't remember having cried with hiccups in my life I cried many times but with hiccups no the only time which I remember where I had hiccups was that night I was fatigued and I'm saying to God my Lord just the soul and now 
I'm lost. I was frustrated, disorientated. I was sad. I was bitter. I went to the bottom of the pit, crying with hiccups. And God heard my prayer. Now, today I remember that Abraham cried as well. He wept just for a child, a son. When he was 75 years of age, he had a dream. He carried the dream of having a son. And God only heard him 25 years later with the son which he and his wife Sarah gave birth to. Now, after all these years which we lived, the faith, we were recently, these last two weeks, we were here in the eastern side of Europe, Russia, Romania and Ukraine. And today we are taking the word to those who thirst and hunger for the word of God through my lips, throughout this world. What do I want to say with this? That God saw my tears back then, my sincerity. I didn't want riches or money. I didn't want to be one of success. No, I just wanted to win souls. I wanted to give to people. When I say to win souls, you who don't understand, it's the following. I want other people to receive in the least what God gave to me. He saved my soul and I wanted to take this knowledge, to take this greatness, this glory to other people. I wanted to do this. And today, 57 years later, we are working throughout the world in the eastern side of Europe. We are in countries where communism impedes the preaching of the gospel. Communism impeded the entrance of the gospel. And we had the privilege to be in those countries. And you know what I observed, my friend? I observed something different from Brazil, different from the United States, different from Latin America, Central America, from Africa, different from everything which we have seen. We saw there in the eastern side of Europe the fulfillment of the Word of God, which was what I just read a few minutes ago, and it filled my soul with joy, and I want to share it with you. I want to share this scripture, so glorious, so simple, but so powerful, that you may understand and perceive that God is the same what he was in the past and what he is right now and what he will be in the future is all the same as he was with Abraham, Isaac and Israel, David, Joshua, with all the heroes of faith. He is with us today. He is with those who call upon him sincerely. So I was meditating in the riches of salvation. And then came this word, the word of God, which says there in Proverbs, the Holy Spirit using Solomon exactly when he was converted, because until then he was not converted. And he had a reason to say what we're going to read right now. Solomon was a man who prayed to God. He asked God wisdom to lead the people, his people, because he was still young and infant. He did not know what to do. He had no knowledge of what it meant to lead a nation. 
which is difficult and complicated. He asked for wisdom and God gave him wisdom, he gave him riches, he gave him everything which he needed. Everything, everything. Solomon reached the point of saying, Everything which my eyes saw, I got it. Everything which my heart desired, I managed to attain it. Everything. I lacked nothing. Riches, glory, women, power, money, everything. I lacked nothing. But still, Solomon came to be the most unhappy man in the face of the earth to the point of saying and making sacrifices to other gods in the temple which he had built for God in the time in which he had communion with the Most High. You see, Solomon insulted the Lord. Solomon provoked the wrath of God. He reached the bottom of the bottom of the pit. And after this, later, he truthfully converted. And then he wrote, he wrote in paper all the inspirations which God gave to him. And one of these inspirations is what we're going to read right now. You who are curious to know, just hang on a bit. But you need to know the history. Solomon had everything. There was nothing, absolutely nothing which he desired and could not have. He was a beautiful man, strong, a king, wise. There was no wiser. There wasn't, there isn't, nor will they be anyone wiser than Solomon. There was no one richer than Solomon. He was the richest in the world. And there will be no one richer than Solomon. This is what God determined. That he would have more than what he thought and imagined. But all the abundance, all the riches, all the glory, all the power which Solomon had only served for one thing for him to lose himself. For him to lose himself. It was in this situation he reached the point of having the conscious of saying the following, what is written here, which the Holy Spirit gave to him. He said, A satisfied soul loads the honeycomb but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet what does this mean what does this mean it means a lot it means extraordinarily many things why for example we see here in Brazil, in these countries which we speak of, where the gospel is preached, where there is radio, internet, all means of communication are made available for the preaching of the gospel. We have the gospel being preached 24-7. In the morning, afternoon, evening, 24-7, we have the gospel being preached. The vehicles of communication are available. So you see, you hear, you understand. But the abundance of messages, these rivers of living water, which are being led or taken to people who 
have a vastness of biblical knowledge almost makes no effect because as Solomon said a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb and this is the situation of these countries who have an abundance of the gospel being preached people don't consider the word of God the word of God to many people does not make or have that powerful effect of a person putting in practice the little which they understand of the word of God the little which they understand I don't understand the whole Bible but what I understand I seek to put in practice what I understand for me is enough to put in practice but the fact is a satisfied soul is the rich for example the rich have an abundance of money so much money so much money that he doesn't know what he's going to do he can buy this he can buy that he can buy whatever he wants but he has so much so much that he ends up falling falling his riches end up being a snare to him ends up being a trap to him as it was to Solomon who was wise he was wise all his riches was a snare to him because he went down to the depths of hell before reaching this conclusion when we say a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb it means the abundance of things even the abundance of the word of God to many people makes no difference the abundance of the word of God so they loathe the honeycomb they don't pay much attention to it they don't give value as they should give to the word of God but when we go there to the eastern side of Europe which is not the first time I've already been there maybe almost 14 years back I saw people who were thirsty I saw people who were hungry people who are waiting for a drop of water to fall from heaven so that they may satisfy their thirst did you know my friend that in this exact moment while I'm speaking to you many people are dying they're going down hell and there is no more salvation for them if a person dies without having known and recognized the Lord Jesus as their only Lord and Savior this person goes straight to hell there is no recitals there is no flowers there is nothing which can change their situation while a person is alive here in this world while a person is in this world he has the condition to be saved after he dies there is no way out it's pointless to pray it's pointless consolation everything is pointless recitals will not solve anything nothing absolutely nothing so I saw that many people still in this world are having for the first time the opportunity to hear the word of God people who never and know nothing of the Bible they don't even know the Bible exists they don't even know the Bible exists or that God exists so people who are pagan people who form part of sects people who are atheists these people are having the opportunity to see and hear and receive live real time to drink a little bit of water to refresh the mouth to wetten the tongue a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb 
And this is what we have seen throughout this world. But in the east of Europe, we see the hungry soul. Even what is bitter is a sweet thing. Do you know why many people are Christians but their lives are not developed? Do you know why? I'll be honest with you. The truth is this. Because these people, many of these people, and I would say the majority of them, perhaps you're one of them, Many people are only expecting to receive. They just want to receive. They don't worry in giving. They only worry with themselves. They worry with themselves. They only want to receive. Oh, I was healed, I was this, that happened, this happened, that also happened. But they're not satisfied. They want more. And more. And more. So they're in this favorless search for blessings and blessings and blessings. They're always searching for them. Searching and searching and searching. Pray for me, Bishop. Pray for this. Pray for that. Go to church. Please pray for me. They just want to receive. And they don't understand. And it's even understandable that they don't understand because, unfortunately, they did not learn the secret of faith. Faith makes us to reach the grace of God, the mercy of God. Faith makes us to reach salvation because I don't see God, I don't touch God, I don't feel God, but I believe in Him. I believe in Him. This belief is what justifies me, is what makes me worthy, is what washes me from my sins. And this belief which is practiced in His Word, obeying His Word, is what makes us happy. Yes, we are happy for practicing the Word of God, the thoughts of God. So we need to give and we want to give. We work with giving. The more we give, the more we receive. And more we give, the more we receive. Why? Because Jesus said, The water which I give, this water will make in him a fountain, which is the Holy Spirit, the fountain to spring into everlasting life. Forever, for all life. The fountain is to spring forth for all life. Those who have the Holy Spirit spring for all life. But there are people who receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, but they are still interested in receiving more. They already have the Holy Spirit, but they want more. They want more of what? More success, more money, more this, more that. They're never satisfied. Never satisfied. There is a thirst within them. It's obvious. They think they have the Holy Spirit. They believe they have the Holy Spirit. But when a person shows a bit of thirst, it's because they are thirsty. They have nothing. But still they don't acknowledge the need. The need, which is the biggest problem which they have, is not money, is not work, is not a job, is not the husband or the wife or the family. No, their biggest problem is themselves. The biggest problem of a person is themselves. And there's only one way to solve this disgraceful problem which is there which is when the disgrace leaves and the Holy Spirit comes inside. If you did not receive the Holy Spirit, my friend, you are an unhappy person and you'll remain unhappy until the day you receive the Holy Spirit. And while you don't receive Him, you won't be happy. You can have the world at your feet. 
You can have riches which are incalculable, but you will step on these riches and you will reach the conclusion that you are poor and miserable, which is what happened to Solomon. Solomon saw this. That's why he said, vanity is vanity. He himself, Solomon, he reached the point of saying and praying in the following manner. Certainly, after his conversion, he says, Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Solomon prayed. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. He had already tasted this. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you, which was his case. He was so full that he ended up denying his faith. Lest I be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Meaning Solomon reached the conclusion, the conclusion that everything he had, everything, 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 was nothing without this daily dependence on God, which is what God wants. God will never give us what we want, but He will give us what we need. Because this is the good father. The father does not give what the child wants. The father gives what the child needs, rather the parents. They give to the child what they need, not what they want. As is God. I want you to understand this spirit. So many pastors, many evangelists, wives, pastors, wives, bishops, wives, many people who are faithful of God lost their faith because of the abundance of the riches of this world. They lost their faith. They deviated because they had a lot. They overdid it. According to the scripture, a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb. When I remembered my past there at the back when I converted, I cried, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. I want to win one person to Jesus, just one. So my soul was desperately thirsty. Today, my soul remains thirsty because those who already converted, I praise God, I thank Him, but I'm not satisfied. I want more. I want more because this is the Spirit of God. I want more souls. But it's obvious that due to the limits, our limitations, we also have limits to reach more, more, and more. But what we can do, we are going to do to try and lead people to the same salvation. You who are watching me this moment, learn a lesson. Learn this lesson. A satisfied soul loads the honeycomb, meaning when a person has too much, he loads. It's the same thing as a person who eats too much. He ate too much which is gluttony. One day I fell in this temptation and I hurt myself. So a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb. It despises. But the thirsty, the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. So Solomon said, don't give me riches or poverty. 
Give me the daily bread which Jesus taught. And in the desert, when the people of Israel, when the people of Israel were in the desert and complained, crying for bread, God sent the manna. Every day, God would make it rain, the manna, in the camp of Israel. But the people could not take more than what they would eat. They could only take the portion necessary for their family. If they would take too much, then it would rot. So they could only take the portion of that day for that day, the need for that day. The following day they would need to take again the need for that day. That's how it worked. That's how it works. So Jesus prayed. He taught us to pray. The daily bread gave us this day, meaning so much for the people of Israel and the people, the Christian people, we need to live in the dependence of God. Lord, give me the daily bread. Don't give me the daily bread with abundance for tomorrow and after tomorrow and after the week because this is the thought of those who are glutton, gluttonous. This is the thought of the lustful. This is the thought of those who are vain. This is the thought of those who live in this world, those who are of the world, where the love of the Father is not in them because they want to reserve for the future. I don't know what will happen in the future, so I want to guarantee my future having a lot right now. We need to live in the dependence of God every single day and you will have the necessary portion to survive. I will speak more about this tomorrow because the scripture here is very strong. Very strong, very strong. Jesus said, he reached the point of saying, how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Do you know why? Not because he is rich. Not because he is rich, but because he trusts in his riches. He removed God the supplier who gives the riches of his life and put in and put his trust in the things which he conquered which god gave to him he put god aside the living god aside to embrace mammon so this trust in the abundance this trust in the guarantee which he has for the rest of his life this is permissible because our trust needs to be in God. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't be ambitious, my friend, to have beyond what you need day after day. Those who have the Holy Spirit have this understanding. Those who have the Holy Spirit have has this discernment and lives every day like this intensively and has the assurance that tomorrow belongs to God and tomorrow he will supply our needs. That's why Jesus says, therefore do not worry for anything, what you will eat or drink or wear, whom you will marry, where you are going to live, none of this. Seek first the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and walk in his righteousness by obeying his word. And all these things shall be added unto you. God bless you until tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen. I was very sick. I had a lot, a lot of sickness. I had um, ear infection, a very bad ear infection. I had asthma. I had breast cancer. And I was very depressed. And this was going on for years. I didn't have any strength. I was very weak. I had children, but I wasn't taking care of them properly due to the situation and it took away 
all the desires that I had, I, I had no plans for my life. And I saw myself like, why am I suffering? Why am I sick? I see other people and they're healthy and I'm the only one that has so many issues with um, sickness. See myself not moving on, just staying and getting worse and worse. I went to the doctor for a regular checkup and they had asked me if I had any family uh, history of anyone having breast cancer or having cancer. And I did have family members, my grandmother, my aunt, cousins, um, my mother, they all had cancer. And I saw myself like being cursed because it was passing down from generations from family felt like it was me the next one to to die mrs janet took the leap of faith and asked for help one day she came to the universal church and her life was transformed one of my friends invited me to the universal church when I stepped into the Universal Church, it was something that I felt that I still remember till today. When I opened the door of the Universal Church, I remember that I opened the door and I started crying. And I didn't know why. And I felt a relief. Before talking to anyone, I just felt a relief. It's like I opened the door and right away, it was something so special to me. I wasn't helped in another, while I was being religious, going to another uh, church. When I came in and I received help and I attended the services and I listened to the Word of God, I absorbed every single word. I started attending on Fridays for deliverance. I started attending on Sundays to hear the word. I started doing votes and campaign. And I learned that God is powerful, that God can transform you. I believe more in myself. I have strength. I was happy. I learned how to handle things in a, in a good way. And a problem, I wouldn't see it as a problem. I would see it like it's not big at all. God is bigger and God can solve my problems. Mm -hmm. But I saw myself being healed. I was able to, I wasn't depressed anymore. When I went to the doctor for a biopsy to check how bad the cancer was and if I had to do surgery and they took x-rays, biopsy and everything disappeared the doctors were surprised they couldn't believe what had happened they asked me did you drink something did you do something what did you do where did you go you don't have anything you don't have to come back you only have to check yourself every year just to make sure that you're fine and from being a sick person i became to be a healthy person I go every year to the doctor and my health is in perfect condition. I was always applying for jobs and I couldn't find any job. And then after I started attending the church, I remember that I applied somewhere and I was, they, they gave me a job. So my life completely changed. I saw myself valuable, like I am a person and I, and I value myself now. I am not afraid anymore to handle what comes into me. I know that God is with me. I was in, in my house and I was praying. I would pray all the time. I would read the Bible, I would pray, I would fast, I would talk to God. And I felt a different person. I remember the day when I received the Holy Spirit. And it was a feeling that is you cannot describe, but it's the greatest feeling that you can have, to have God inside you, to know that He is with you see a person, I give them the word and I tell them that God can change their, them, that as, the same way he did with me, he can do with them. The first thing I overcame was the depression. Once that I was not depressed anymore, I had strength to work on all the areas of my life. I became a person that is brave, that I don't, I am not afraid of 
anything that comes in my way. I know that obstacles, we have to, we have God with us. God can transform our life. The Helpline Call Center is open 24 hours a day, every day of the week, all year round. If you need help due to a serious problem you may be going through, if you feel that you have nowhere to turn to and desperately need someone to lend a listening ear, then we can help you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, your religion or race. Your call will be answered by someone who genuinely cares about you and have your best interests at heart. We also arrange home visits for the housebounds and hospital visits for anyone in great need of kindly human contact. Whether it is simply information you want or desperately need someone to talk to, we're here for you.